tonight. Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship begins 2022 in Mississippi State Capitol. Coming to you from the Jackson Convention Complex, located in this historic city's downtown. It's BKFC Fight Night, and we will open with two preliminary bouts. Then at the top of the hour, our main card will begin live on the Bare Knuckle TV app, which you can download at BKFC.com. Tonight's feature fight, Quentin Henry versus Chris Saro in the cruiserweight division. The co-main, set for the heavyweight division, Bobo O'Bannon versus Alan Belcher. And our main event of the evening for the inaugural BKFC Welterweight Championship, Elvin Brito versus Caleb Harris. Hey everyone, with Chris Lights Out Lytle, I'm Sean Wheelock. Our first BKFC of 2022. Chris, a stacked card, a really eagerly anticipated main event of the evening. At stake, the first ever BKFC welterweight title. Elvin Brito defeated Caleb Harris July 2020 to July of 2020. It was a mid-card bout. There was both a split decision. Brito said, of course I won. I won all five <laughs> rounds. I don't know what this split decision was. Harris said, I felt I actually won the fight. Tonight, the rematch, much higher stakes, obviously. Absolutely. Title fight implication. And I got to be honest, I felt like it shouldn't have been a split decision. I thought Brito won that fight. However, this is a different fight, and both guys are in a different place in their career. They're both peaking, in my opinion. This is the perfect time for this fight. Elvin's just been really Really dominant at what he does, not get hit and hit the opponent. And Caleb Harris, his last few fights, he just went up a level, doing everything he wants to do, looking completely dominant. You cannot take a better time for these two guys to fight. The thing I love, both guys truly believe the other guy has no business being in there with him. They are head and shoulders above the other guy, and that's when you're going to have a great fight. Mystic Zach is set to join us now with tonight's fight odds. He is presented, as always, by BetOnline.ag. In tonight's BKFC main event, we've got a fight between two square circled veterans in Elvin Brito and Caleb Harris. Both of these guys fought to a tough, close split decision back in 2020, and I've been undefeated inside the square circle since. But I like what I've seen out of Caleb Harris specifically. Although he's the underdog here, plus 165, I think he's made some drastic improvements since that fight. I like what I've seen out of his jab, and the main thing that I've liked, especially in his last fight, a win over boxing veteran Derek Finley, is the fact that he's throwing volume. He's throwing punches and bunches. He's throwing combinations, and that's very important. Volume is king, and I think Caleb Harris has that in spades. That's what I think is going to be the key to victory for him here tonight. That's why I like his value here at plus 165 over at Better Lines at AG. And those are my picks for tonight's BKFC Fight Night Jackson. The Bare Knuckle TV app gives you access to live BKFC events and the full Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship archives. Plus, you'll get fighter interviews, behind-the-scenes content, the latest news, original programming, and more. It's how you can watch our main card tonight, which begins at the top of the hour. You can also watch on the Bare Knuckle TV app next month's Knuckle Mania 2, all for just $4.99 per month. Truly the best deal in combat sports. Knuckle Mania 2 is set for Saturday evening, February 19th at Seminole Hard Rock in Hollywood, Florida. On this absolutely stacked card, you'll see two world title fights, plus the BKFC debuts of Mike Perry and Chad Mendez. Again, you can watch it live right here worldwide on the Bare Knuckle TV app as part of your subscription without an additional fee. To purchase tickets for Knuckle Mania 2 and for more information, go online to BKFC.com. Bout number one, event number one, year five, 2022 in Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, and we begin in the Bantamweight division. Our tale of the tape is presented by Onyx, David Diaz versus Albert Incline. And, and Sean, if you look at this, incredibly even on these guys, almost exactly the same reach, same height, almost even the same fist fight, for crying out loud. But this is not going to be about that kind of, it, it's about experience right now. David Diaz has had the fight Incline. It's going to be if Incline can understand quickly and adapt and come right at David Diaz. Albert Incline set to make not just his bare knuckle debut but his pro combat sports debut. Coming through the open BKFC trials, no pro or amateur combat sports experience. He did, however, train expense extensively as a kid in boxing in his native Phoenix, Arizona, under a five-time former boxing world champion and 1988 U.S. Olympic medalist in boxing, Michael Carbajal. Yeah, he trained since he was in the sixth grade. Looks at his opponent, he feels like his opponent is wild and not very skilled. He's going to be better than that. 
He says he really feels like his style is going to help him out in this fight. He really wants to come in there, catch his opponent in uppercuts and body shots. Inquan told us he feels he's very good fighting backwards. He said, I want to establish my jab. Don't stand and trade with Davi Diaz. I expect Diaz to come forward aggressively, land my shots when he does. Davi Diaz, also a successful BKFC trialist. You see, hitting mix there with our buddy Chris Lieben, then making his BKFC and Pro Combat Sports debut March of last year. He defeated Spencer Ruggieri by way of majority decision. And the thing you got like about Davi Diaz is all he does is come in there and wing punches, all heart, nothing really technique-wise. He just comes and shows you what he has. Look at this, just winging punches right now. That's what he has in him, heart. What he worked on after that was his technique. He says he's been training extensively after that, much better shape physically, wants to come in here and showcase what he's been working on. David Diaz said, I genuinely dislike Albert Inclan. He has been hassling me on social media, direct messaging me. I've ignored it. I'm the real fighter. Diaz said of Inclan, he's emotional already. This is his first fight of any kind, Emmy or pro. I think he's going to be overly emotional. That will lead to mistakes. I have to take advantages. Chris, he also told us when Inclan throws one punch, I'm throwing seven in return. Well, also said he talked about emotional. What are you talking about? He was emotional his first fight. He's emotional. He has to learn to be less emotional. He actually went to a shaman who talked to him about turning that hate, turning that into passion. And he said he went and stayed with her for three weeks to get that out of him. You will see in the corner of Davi Diaz, one of the best fighters on the BKFC roster, the former Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship heavyweight titleist, Joey Beltran. Definitely said he wants to use the first few rounds to wear out his opponent. He thinks using that emotion is going to get him tired. All he has to do is survive the first few rounds, wear him out, and then he wants to come in and get that KO. He's won by the season that he wants to KO this time. Diaz said, I have phenomenal cardio. Since my debut last March when I defeated Spencer Ruggieri, my cardio is better. I'm faster. I'm physically stronger. I'm here to make a statement. Wants to work on head movement. He's a stronger body. He says, look at me. I'm in much better shape than last time. I'm taking this serious. This is what I want to do with my life. He's taking this as serious as possible. He's coming to make a statement in this fight. Bout number one of two, this is our free view preliminaries coming to you live online worldwide. At the top of the hour, our main card begins on the Bare Knuckle TV app. <laughs> to get us started, we send him to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to the magnificent Jackson Convention Complex here in Jackson. We are live worldwide on Bare Knuckle TV, and this is BKFC Fight Night Jackson. We are set for our BKFC Fight Night preview, and our first fight is scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the bantamweight division, presented to you by Onnit Total Human Optimization. Introducing you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight, he wears flames trimmed in black. He stands 5 feet 6 inches tall. His official weight, 135.5 pounds. Tonight, he makes his bare knuckle debut. Fighting out of Phoenix, Arizona. Here is Albert Trillfly. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears black trimmed in the proud colors of Mexico. He stands 5 feet 5 inches tall. His official weight, 135.8 pounds. He is undefeated in the squared circle at 1-0. Fighting out of South Central L.A. By way of Zacatejas, Mexico. Here is Don. And our referee in charge of the action, Wayne Spinola. This and all bouts tonight are scheduled for five two-minute rounds and are scored by three judges assigned by the Mississippi Athletic Commission on the 10-point must system. Sprinters start, not even up to scratch yet for David Diaz now, literally jumping up to scratch. 
Call of knuckle up from referee Wayne Spinola. Round number one. Great trunks with the tree color for David Diaz. Red and black trunks for Albert Incline. Immediate separation. Wayne Spinola right back to it. Running into the pocket now is Diaz. I know Diaz talked about being less emotional. He's way more emotional than it seems like. Good turn from Incline now to the body. Both fighters throwing big. Now the separation. Diaz talking to Incline. Incline high tight striking guard. Lands the left. Misses with the right hand. Big swing from Diaz. He has talked about being more composed. It seems like he's a little less composed. He's just winning and punches. I feel like his opponent has got into his head right now. Short uppercut lands from Diaz. Incline with the overhand right. Big swings again from both men. To the clinch once more. There's the separation from Spinola. He has got to be careful. He's going in recklessly. He's going to hit one of those punches. He's really going to get hurt. Half tie plum snatched by Diaz. The separation left hand. Counter left from Albert Incline. 55 seconds remaining round number one of this bantamweight fight now the good news for diaz is we know he can get tired and he can still fight i'm not sure if incline can so we're going to figure that out here soon Incline now taking a backward step again he told us he felt very confident in his ability to fight forward catch diaz coming in well he also said he has an ability to fight backing up which is a very rare thing to have Turn again from Incline, turn right back from Diaz. 25 seconds remaining on the separation, the uppercut from Incline. Diaz better keep those hands up. I know he feels confident he can take the punch, but you never know what's going to happen. One good punch can change things in this game. On the underhook. Final seconds, round number one. Yeah. Diaz versus Albert Inclan at 135 pounds. Non stop through the opening rounds. There is the bell. More punches after the bell. In comes Wayne Spinola. And that needs to be a point right there. He clearly hit him after the bell. That was intentional. Oh, and that cut him open. That could, that's, that's, that could be devastating right there. I mean, Diaz cannot see right now. That was. Listen for the bell, the final seconds of round one. Two full punches after the bell. Yeah, and, and that cut Diaz open pretty good. If they can't go on, something has to be done about that because that was clearly intentional. And I'd hate to see the fight stop because of that. But if you can't see because of an illegal blow, you should win the fight. The rule is not when the punch lands, but when it's thrown. So if the punch is thrown before the bell sounds, the bell then sounds mid-flight, the punch lands, that's legal. But clearly, those punches were both thrown and landed after the bell. 100%. Just saw Brandon Lambert in the corner of Albert Incline. I wonder if that's what they're talking about right now. That might be a nasty cut on his eye. You, you can't tell from here. Shoes the left eye. There's Dr. Don Muzi, immediate past president of the Association of Ringside Physicians. Dr. Muzi saying that Diaz is all right to continue. I didn't even see if that was a hard warning. It better be at least a hard warning in that situation. The fighters up to scratch. Round number two. Make it right hand for Inclan to start the second round. Diaz with the head movement now coming forward. Open striking guard. He has up with the jab. There's the right hand again, naked from Inclan without the jab set up. Big swing and a miss on the entry from David Diaz. Counter left hand and the right from Inclan. Inclan now to the body. Diaz just keep throwing these looping punches that are easy to see coming. On the underhook, the turn from Inclan. Turn right back from Diaz. Let's go with the right hand. Diaz is looping these punches so much, he's not able to land on the face. The only thing to land is kind of the back of the head or the neck. Ill advised from Inclan, taking his mouthpiece out mid round and sticking it back in. And this might be what we talked about that getting a little bit tired now, that lactic acid buildup. You might not be used to fighting at this pace because Diaz does come with a ferocious pace. He swings again from Inclan off the mark. See the swelling under the left eye of David Diaz. There's the uppercut from Incline. This is definitely slowed down for both men here in round two from what they both said in round one. Jab from David Diaz. And you kind of knew that was going to happen. They couldn't keep going at that pace. Slight smile on the face of Albert Incline. 40 seconds remaining round two. 
Got a big swing and a miss from Diaz, but it allows him to enter, Chris. Short left hand, that lands from Inclan. Right hand from Diaz. Diaz with another right hand, that backs off Albert Inclan. Warning from Spinola, coming over the head in that head chancery guillotine position is not allowed. You can cup it with one hand in the half tie plum single call and tie. You cannot come over the crook of your arm legally over the back of your opponent's head. You can tell Inclan is getting very tired right now. If he can continue to fight this pace, we know Diaz seems to be very good about that. There's another late punch in the end of round two. You gotta wonder how many times he's gonna warn this guy before he takes away his point. Take you back to the end of round number one. Spinola showing his authority and his strength there, Chris. <laughs> we'll help fight. We'll get to 135 pounds. Anyway. I'd like to tell you I never knocked a fighter down when I was refereeing professional boxing, but that would be untrue. <laughs> Once again, I feel like the key to this fight right now is, is Incline going to be able to get in there, hit David Diaz with enough to either cut him open or take him out? Because I feel like as this keeps going, Incline is not used to this pace. He's not used to this adrenaline up, and it's going to be a little difficult for him to go for five rounds. And a quick thumbs up from Dr. Don Muzi. The issue is the left eye of Davi Diaz. Here is round number three. You did start from both men. You see the aversion with the right hand. Again, there's that step in, naked right hand from Incline. Good right hand from Diaz landed flush. Inclan took it very well though. His head went back, but he's fine now. Wide punches from Inclan coming forward. Diaz with the left hand. Oh, that hit him good. That was a trip. That was a trip. Was a trip. Ruled as such immediately by Wayne Spinola. Diaz continuing to talk to Inclan. And, and Inclan keeps taking his mouthpiece out. I'm not sure why they, he's doing that. Obviously, it's not fitting properly. Jeff from Diaz just off the mark. Can you see the right hand of Diaz? Waving to this side is a diversionary tactic. Step forward punches. And Clark talked to us about moving backwards, moving forwards. Chris, that's on full display here. Absolutely. Clark's throwing a lot of punches from a lot of angles, as you see there. Winging punches walking down David Diaz. Diaz trying to reset. 55 seconds now remaining round number three. You know, it's very difficult when you're winging punches like this to put much on, but they're arm punches. You have to step in, turn the hips, rotate on the foot. That's not happening when you get tired. Separation again. He has to the body, left hand from Incline. There's the jab from Incline off the mark. He was looking for the level change to the body. David Diaz didn't fully get through. Both fighters continue to throw. 20 seconds remaining round three. Race inch grab by Diaz could take full advantage. Step in left hand and the right on the temple. Big swing just off the mark from Inclan. Big entry overhand right from David Diaz. Like Inclan, you can just tell his, his tiredness when he, he misses punches, he gets pushed backwards and he's being thrown around. Diaz with the right hand. There's the bell. No late punches. Next stop, round four. I know a lot of people think they're only going two minutes. How tired can you get? You can get extremely tired. And you can tell right now when Luke Incline is just extremely tired out there. He's given everything he has, but the body's not reacting. And here's some good punches being landed by Diaz. They're wide, they're looping, but they're landing. And that was a trip right there. You can see it was not a punch. It was the legs got tangled up. A bit of refereeing from Wayne Spinola, recognizing that trip slash slip immediately. You know, I'd really like to see right now Diaz coming through with a little bit more straight punches. You hit him, set him up with these wild moving punches. You can come in and throw a couple jabs, a couple right hands. That could make the difference in this fight. So round number four we go.
Remember, at the top of the hour, our main card begins. Eight fights in total. Opening at BKFC event of 2022. We start year number five of this great promotion, the revival of this great historic combat sport. We're live in Jackson, Mississippi. David Diaz versus Albert Inclan. Two fighters who both emerged from the open BKFC trials. Taking their place, center circle, center ring. I mean, when Inclan throws his punches and misses, I mean, they're just going forever. He's throwing his uppercuts and his handles way over his head. Big swings again, the entry from Diaz. It's a really good turn from Inclan. There's the left hand. That's a good exit. The right hand right back in from David Diaz. Now to the body, counter right hand from Inclan. See the fade from David Diaz. 15 remaining round four. Jab to the body, right hand. He just smothers and look at him because he kind of controls the ring a lot of times. I mean, Incline's doing a good job of reversing it, but he doesn't seem to be able to keep it. There's the uppercut from Incline, rear right hand. Incline has done exceedingly well turning Diaz, but now it's Diaz coming forward. There's the right hand into the clinch again. There's that clever little turn from Albert Incline, Chris. Does a good job of doing that. He just doesn't seem to be able to keep it. On the elbow. Short right hand. Good job by Diaz. You can just tell he has more energy right now. Diaz getting the right hand through from the half tie punt. Big shots now. Wayne Spinola says right back to it. You just see right now, Inclan is just gas. He's dead tired right now. He might be able to end this fight right now. He's trying to grab Diaz's hand to stop this onslaught from coming. Diaz just needs to keep throwing punches right now. Diaz just looking for a TKO by attrition of punches. Short, hard punches in rapid succession. Final seconds round number four. Diaz still looking for the finish. Inclan holding on, firing back with the right hand, left to the body, another right hand. Diaz coming forward again, there is the bell. We move to the fifth and final round. And you can really just see the momentum has shifted right now. Diaz is in control right now. I'm surprised right now. Inclan is even able to continue to fight right now. Here's a good series right now for Diaz. Grabbing that thigh plum, throwing his opponent around, and that's still legal to keep hitting the guy. He's not on the ground right now. I mean, and look, Inclan's doing a good job of just firing back when he has to, but he's dead tired. Look at him right now. Can't even keep his legs underneath him. He's being pushed around. I guarantee he's going to tell you this is the most tired he's ever been in his life right now. You gotta give him a lot of props right now, Sean. He's showing hard. This is a different animal that he's dealing with right now with Diaz. Diaz just doesn't seem to get tired and he's always on go the entire time. Maximum of one round, two minutes remaining. And look, mouthpiece still out. Second pro fight ever for Davi Diaz, 1 0 in BKFC. Professional fighting debut for Albert Incline. Both fighters definitely have had their moments. There's the diversion from Diaz. Good left hand from Diaz. Continuing to push his opponent around. Seeing a lot of heart, a lot of character from both men. A lot of durability. Smile on the face of Diaz, but Incline throwing the right hand into that face that was smiling at him. You gotta be careful when you get cocky in this boot. Hand to the body. He has trying to open up Inclan with his back against the ropes. Takes that right hand uppercut in return from Inclan. Diaz stepping in and smothering it. The perfect time right now for David Diaz to open up. His opponent is dead time. You can see every punch coming. When he winds up and throws, you see it coming. Running forward now is Diaz. Inclan did not seem ready for that. Fair game. That was legal and smart from Diaz. I think he's just gassed. Look at this right there. This referee might want to look into stopping this because he could seriously get hurt if he cannot defend himself. These are unfettered shots from Davi Diaz. Inclan's hands are down. Gas tank nearly empty. Right hand from Davi Diaz. Good body work. That's what we'd like to see right there. Trying to throw back Diaz a right hand. No knockdowns in this fight. Diaz looking for the knockdown, and indeed the knockout coming forward again. There's a big left hand, 25 seconds remaining, fifth and final round. There's nothing but hard punches here. This, this is a really mauling in this round. Turn from Diaz. 
Incline bouncing off against the corner cushion. Surprised he hasn't been able to knock him down here for body punches. The shots were legal. They were off the spine. Right hand, left hand. Diaz continuing to throw. He'll try to throw to the belt. If there had been any more time left, I think we would have had a stoppage right there. The end of the fight. That's all hard for both men. Well done mean, from Davi Diaz and Albert Inclan. You can see just see the emotional release right now from David Diaz. He feels like he's done enough to win the fight. And right now, I mean, Inclan is just totally exhausted right now. Has nothing left in him. I cannot believe he made it to the end of that fight. Son. He looked like he was definitely on E. You know, I feel like both fighters went out there in the first part and they expended a lot of energy. And when you do that, that makes it where the punches aren't quite as hard anymore. The technique wasn't there. They weren't turning over. There's a lot of hard punches, but it was a lot of fun to watch. See Joey Beltran in the corner. His protege, David Diaz. Smile on the face of Beltran. Smile on the face of David Diaz. We shall see. In the hands now of the three Mississippi assigned judges. I mean, if you look over at him, he has yet to look up. He's been bent over the entire time. I don't think he can believe how tiring that was, dude. Ten minutes of hard work. I mean, if body language means anything, you can tell one this fight. Unfortunately, I don't think it does mean anything. Sometimes you can have a great fight and the judges see it differently, but we'll see what happens here. Rich, you and I know, <laughs> nothing in combat sports judging. Exactly. Both fighters going all out every second of all five rounds, all ten minutes. And just look how tired these guys. Do you remember we used to watch the movie Rock and you'd be like, oh, people never get that tired. These guys look that tired. I mean, I'm not sure how nobody hit the canvas in this except for on a trip. A lot of clean punches. Definitely arm punches, but still punches all the same. Diaz feeling very good about that performance. Well, I mean, it was definitely a tough performance, especially the first couple rounds. He took a lot of shots. But that pace he puts is, is difficult to deal with. He comes at you from awkward angles. You think it'd be easier to counter, not as easy as you might think. Jeff Houston is not yet in the ring. So still the tallying of the three Mississippi judges scorecards. That is the delay. You know, we always talk about that being grounds for a split decision when it takes a long time to count them up. Usually it's something <laughs> other than a unanimous decision. Don't expect a lot of 50-45s in this fight, <laughs> judging from this delay. And I don't think there was any kind of a point taken away at the end of that first round after those shots were, I thought it merited it, but it didn't happen. So. I never saw an indication from Wayne Spinola to take away a point or points on those late punches at the end of round number one. Jeff Houston is set. We send it to him now. Ladies and gentlemen, after completing the scheduled five rounds, here are the score totals from our judges at ringside. All three judges scored the fight 49-45 in favor of your winner by unanimous decision, David Ignacio Diaz. Sean, another fantastic heartfelt 
performance by David Diaz. He shows he has a lot of heart. He has some skill to work on, but he's looking very good out there as far as being able to come out there and entertain the crowd. Chris, granted, I'm not a math guy, but I can't figure out that math. 49-45, if there was a point deduction, it would have been the incline, not Diaz. But those are the scores. Sean, I'm not real sure once again, but they were all three in agreement. So what does that tell you? You have the daughter who goes to Purdue. I was hoping you might know. Hard fought from David Diaz and Albert Incline. A phenomenal start to year number five, our opening bout in Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship in the year 2022. The winner, by way of unanimous decision, David Diaz defeats Albert Incline. Welcome to the world of Bare Knuckle TV. Watch every live Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship pay-per-view event for only $4.99 per month. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including unlimited access to the full library of BKFC pay-per-views, behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare-knuckle fights from around the globe. You can access it anywhere you want, anytime you want, instantly on most streaming devices. It's available right now on Bare Knuckle TV. Over 1,000 hours of on-demand content, uncut and uncensored. All here, anytime you want, anywhere you want, for only $4.99 a month. Subscribe now exclusively at BKFC.com. BKFC Fight Night is live tonight in Mississippi's capital city, Jackson, and we are presented by Crescent Tools. Tiger Life, the cleaner energy drink. Odd Socks. And by Eight Man Strong. Set now for a bout in the women's flyweight division. Jocelyn Jones Leibarger versus Martina Cruel. And as you can see here, Sean, looks like Martina Cruel has a pretty good height advantage, four inches, but a more impressive reach advantage, six inches. That means she's going to have the ability to keep. Her opponent at, the, at range, keep her hitting her from being able to come in. She wants to make her pay every time she wants to come in. Martina Cole wants to stay out, make Jocelyn eat a punch every time she wants to close that distance. The Polish-born, Dutch national, Atlanta, Georgia-based Martina Cruel set to make her BKFC debut. A veteran of 38 pro Muay Thai bouts. Cruel was also a professional horse racing, racing jockey for three years. She speaks five languages. Very interesting life. We talked to her, lived in many different places. Very interesting. We've never had somebody go from jockey to become a professional fighter, but she has done that, and she's had a lot of success and experience at this round. Cruel told us in our fighter meeting, I pride myself on being a very cerebral fighter, but I know that I can get em emotional, and when I do, I let my hands go. I really open up. Yeah. Very good thing. She doesn't know too much about her opponent, but what she felt like, she does have some good head movements. She has some... Fast hands, she wants to utilize her length to capitalize on that and make sure she can keep her opponent at bay and do damage from there. Cruel also told us, Chris, straight one twos, keep adapting as the fight progresses. I cannot tense up, I cannot waste energy by stressing out. I have to be relaxed, I have to be fluid. Absolutely, she says she does expect this to be a very intense experience. She's experienced lots of different forms of combative sports, not this. She says she does have technique, but says, she always has that ability to get back and trade if she has to. That's plan B. That's not plan A. The UFC veterans keep on coming to Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. There is the latest. Jocelyn jones Liebarger, veteran of 10 pro MMA bouts, including the last three in the UFC. She also fought once in Invicta. She was a college basketball player on the NCAA Division I level at San Diego State University. Jones Leibarger told us that as a teenager, her dream was to be in the WNBA, and then she discovered fighting, and this is her full <laughs> career focus. You know what I loved about the interview talking to her? We asked why did she 
finished with the UFC and come here. She said it just wasn't fun anymore. It wasn't exciting to her. Then she saw this. She said this is as real as it gets. This is what I want to be involved with. Jones Leibarger said, I put a huge focus on moving my head and training for this, my bare knuckle debut. I feel that my opponent, Martina Cool, is relatively slow. I want a fast start to really emphasize that speed differential. Back we go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now set for the next fight of the night. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the women's flyweight division. Presented to you by Crescent Tools. Introducing you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight, she wears red and blue. She stands five feet, eight inches tall. Her official weight, 125.6 pounds. She is a Muay Thai veteran of 38 fights and makes her bare knuckle debut. Fighting out of Atlanta, Georgia, by way of... Poland. Here is Martina the Bully Cruel. And across the ring, her opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, she wears gray trimmed in black and white. She stands five feet six inches tall. Her official weight, 124.7 pounds. She holds an impressive MMA record of eight victories opposite four defeats. And tonight also makes her bare knuckle debut. Fighting out of Glendale, Arizona. Here is Jocelyn Jones Leibarger. And our referee in charge of the action, Bill Clancy. Jones Leibarger said, I feel that I can hurt Martina Cruel with my jab. I'm going to be aggressive with that jab. I have to remember to keep resetting my hands after punches as I know Cruel will return. Round number one, black and white trunks for Jocelyn Jones Leibarger. Red and blue Muay Thai trunk for Martina Cruel. Right Snap away, left hand. You can tell that that length right now, that advantage that Cruel has is going to be difficult to deal with. Jones Leibarger in her scouting report thought that Cruel was slow. That's a fast looking jab from the poor Martina Cruel. Right hand, Jones Leibarger sitting down on that. Poor pressure from Jones Leibarger. Left hand counters off of the ropes from Cruel. And you're going to think Leibarger, once she gets inside, she's going to stay inside. I don't want to deal with that reach the entire time. Martina Cruel keeping her length. You see the head movement, the level changes from Jones Leibarger. You have to think Cruel with that Muay Thai background is going to have a good clinch as well. Snap jab again. That was caught. There's the slip. Short uppercut. Half tie plum now snapped by Martina Cruel. This is a position with those 38 pro Muay Thai bouts. The Cruel told us she's very confident to be in. There's the break from referee Bill Clancy. 45 seconds remaining round number one of this women's flyweight bout. See Jones Leibarger trying to solve that reach and range advantage of Martina Cruel, who is parked on the outside, staying long off of the one. I do really like Cruel has that very good step jab. She steps and throws a really long jab. This is very difficult to get into. There's a sharpshooter jab from Martina Cruel. There's a hard left jab again. Jones Leibarger cut left brow. Blood now flowing freely into her left eye, into the clinch. Cruz doing just what she says. He talked about that one, too. That is a full display right now. Very difficult to do. You have that jab coming at all times. And then when you try and slip it, that two's right behind it. There's the lockdown pressure now for Martina Cruel. Cruel on the overhand right. Flurry just before the bell. Next stop, round two. Jones Leibold is going to have to come up with a strategy to figure that out. We talked about it with her head movement slipping. You can do that, but it's very difficult when that two comes right behind it. You're going to have to slip that and move inside. Really do some damage from the inside. Stay in that pocket. Stay a little bit closer. You don't want to stay on the outside with Bruce. She's proven to me she has a very good jab and knows how to use it.
Smear of blood still on the face of Jocelyn Jones Liborger. Both fighters up to scratch. Round number two with a call of knuckle up from Bill Clancy. Right back to work with the one is Martina Cruel. Chris has a really impressive jab. Absolutely. Like I said, she's got a good jab. She pumps it out there a lot, and she's just waiting for her opportunity to throw that too. The jab is a very good brawler. You want to keep throwing that. That's more of your machine gun, but she's looking to land that cannon. She wants to land that too, and that's going to be the damage. Well, everything off of the jab. Jones Leibar are trying to work her way in smartly off the level changes. Good tuck under. And that's what she needs to do right there. She needs to work, and as she gets inside, unload punches. Very open, active guard for Jocelyn jones Liebarger. Stepping jab from Cruel off the mark. 50 seconds gone, round two. He left hand from Cruel. That did not land. That allowed the entry for jones Liebarger into the clinch. jones Liebarger is doing a very good job right now of avoiding that punch and coming inside. The problem is when she's getting inside, she's grabbing her opponent instead of throwing punches. Cruel, that was clever. Fainted with the jab to step in right hand. Really Stop. clever sequence. Break. Step back. Look up. These are very clean breaks, Chris. Again. One, two, just off the mark. Stop. My time. My time. You go over here. Time Stop. called by Bill Clancy, and it is because of that cut. Above the left eye of Jocelyn Jones Liebarger. Well, I think the problem is that blood is flowing into the eye right now of Liebarger, and they want to make sure that she can see, and that's not going to be a problem for the fight. Usually they don't stop it because it's bleeding too bad. It's just where is it bleeding? If it's bleeding into the eye and you can't see, that's the problem. See if that instills a bit more urgency in Jocelyn Jones Liebarger, who has already been setting a high pace, but so too in return is Martina Cruel. This is a very good fight from two really talented fighters, both making their respective BKFC debuts. Closing stages, round number two. We move to round three. This is a good fight. Yeah, and, and if I'm in the corner of Jones Liebarger right now, I'm saying you're doing a very good job of slipping punches. You're using good head movement, but after you slip that punch, you have to come back with a power shot. I don't want you getting inside. Oh, look at these good straight punches being thrown right now by Cool. Courtney Casey in support of her teammate Jocelyn Jones Liebarger. Casey, of course, the outstanding UFC flyweight. I mean, look, Cruz up right now. She's not in any distress right now. She's uh, ready to go. I don't even think she sat down the entire break there. She's just. Chopping in the bit, ready to come back and start fighting. Total line. Round three underway. Bouncing the step of Jocelyn Jones Liebarger off his scratch. Leave it to one. Don't breathe. Same shit. Go back to what you were doing. Jones Liebarger trying to be active off of the jab more so than we saw in the opening two rounds. I talked about a sense of urgency, perhaps, Chris. We're seeing it now, early stages round three from Jocelyn Jones Liebarger. Hey, Jocelyn, move ahead. Once again. Jones Lightbar, when she gets inside, she's grabbing her opponent. She needs to bear, and now she's just throwing punches. That's what she needs to do. Just continue to throw punches. You don't want to hold the opponent. Now you have to go right back through and close that gap, gap again. She's doing a better job right now. She's staying inside and winging punches. Here's the heavy aggression that Jones Lightbarger talked to us about in our fighter meeting. She said it would be paramount in her game plan. Well, she was right, and right now that's on full display. She has to get inside right now. She cannot continue to stay out and try and deal with these jabs and deal with these one-twos. It's a difficult proposition. Martina Cruel has been at her best when she has had length able to pop that devastating jab, but you see the smothering pressure now in the clinch. Great call by Bill Clancy. There's that long-range jab for Martina Cruel. Good job right now by Jones Lobbers. He waited for the first jab and got out of the way and came right back in with power. Stop! Break! Surprised he stopped that right there. Both, both combatants were landing punches. Flurry on the inside. 
into the clinch. Right, 25 seconds remaining round number three. And I like right there, Harry Jones, right there, she, when they're saying break, she's not getting far away. She's still sitting in the pocket, staying right by her opponent. They're they're clean clean breaks and it's legal, but they're not separating long distance. Nor do they have to? If they don't make you, why would you? Especially, especially if you have to close that gap and deal with that jab. I do the same thing. Best round of the three thus far for Jocelyn Jones Liebarger. We move to round four. Yeah, that, that was a very close round right there, but definitely her, her best round right now. You want to do whatever you can to stay away from that jab. I'm not sure if she's listening to me in the corner right now, but she's doing exactly what I'm saying right now. She's a very smart fighter. You can tell she's avoiding that punch, avoiding that jab, and coming right in with power shots and trying to make it a dirty fight. That's what you have to do when you have a person of that kind of length, and, and they know how to use it. We always talk about having that length. Some people are taller, and they try and brush on the inside. They're not utilizing their advantage. That's not the case here. Cool knows exactly what she wants to do, and she's doing it when she can. The KFC fan favorite, Joe Elmore, one of our favorites in the corner of Martina Cruel. Cruel has been really impressive to this point. It's as good a jab as we have seen from any fighter <laughs> in BKFC. It is a Larry Holmes-like rangefinder telephone pole jab. Great, and like I said, she's not I'm just done. looking to throw that jab. She's looking to throw that, too. She's setting you up for it. When you duck, if you duck to your left, that two's coming. Again, Dr. Don Muzi. It's the cut over the oh, left eye the face of Jocelyn jones Lightbarger, And this oh, fight is no over. Saving. And no, just no, like yeah, that, the yeah, medical yeah, stoppage yeah, TKO yeah. and the win for Martina Cruel in her BKFC debut. Wow, that was really unfortunate. That was after it seemed to me that jones Lightbarger really kind of figured out her strategy. If she could have done that a little bit earlier, maybe it would have made a difference. But... Yeah. We know the doctor, he's not going to stop it if there's not merited, if there's not a reason. I don't know what it was right now, but I, I trust the doctor did the right thing. Again, Dr. Don Muzi, the immediate past president of the Association of Ringside Physicians, chief medical officer for BKFC, is his final ringside physician as there is in the world. He is not one to stop fights quickly. You know my name now. Looks like a cruel having a go at Jocelyn Jones Leibarger saying, you know my name now. Looked like it was that second cut on the eyelid right there that caused the stoppage. It was the first one on the forehead, he kind of let go, but as the second one formed, I think that's what did it. Chris, you and I talk at length in our fighter meetings with every fighter on every card. We never picked up any animosity between Jones Leibarger or Cruel, but yet Cruel really letting have jo Jones Leibarger have it. Here it is, Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our rep ladies and gentlemen our ringside physician calls a stop to this fight at the conclusion of round number three for your winner by tko martina the bully crawl sean that was a very impressive performance right there with those jazz and those one two she knew her range she kept it at that as much as possible did a lot of damage Martina Cruel then very respectful, almost apologizing for her outburst. If you know my name now, showing a lot of class there in victory to Jocelyn Jones Leibarger. And as deep as you and I talk about women's 125 pound division BKFC, it just got that much deeper. Martina Cruel, that was a spectacular debut. Jocelyn Jones Leibarger, her last three fights in the UFC, coming to Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship with so much talent, but Martina Cruel, so accurate, so devastating from range with her jab. The winner, by way of TKO, two minutes, round number three, medical stoppage, Martina Cruel defeats Jocelyn Jones Leibarger. Chris, we're in Jackson, Mississippi, our first event of BKFC year 2022. Next month, we will be in South Florida, Knuckle Mania 2. Unbelievable, Sean. I remember Knuckle Mania 1, one of the great fights I've ever been to. Great buildup, and sometimes you don't know how the fights are going to play out when it has a great card. That one delivered. Uh, Knuckle Mania 2, 
you know, when I say you don't know, I think you do know this. When you just look at the card, it has to be great. I, I, there's about four or five fights. All about, I, I don't know four of my fights, but they're all great so far. If you subscribe to the Bare Knuckle TV app, you get Knuckle Mania 2 as part of your regular subscription. There are no additional fees. Saturday evening, February 19th at Seminole Hard Rock in Hollywood, Florida. Two title fights as well as the BKFC debut of Chad Mendez and Mike Perry, who will be facing Julian Lane. As we look ahead to the biggest bare knuckle event of the year, here's Fight Camp on Glove, the road to Knuckle Mania 2. He's trash. Trash person, trash fighter, trash boxer, no swag, no technique, stiff as a board, and I'm gonna slap him up every chance I get. Every time I see him, I'm going after him. You can't just come in bare knuckle and think you're gonna make an easy check. In order to get in, you gotta get through me. They're gonna let me bang. Bro, let's go! Sometimes I just look back and watch and just see how far I've come and the progress I've been making over the last few years. You know, especially this last this last year, honestly, I've made a lot of progress, man. And um, I got the biggest fight of my life coming up with, uh, you know, Platinum P. So. I'm just focused, man, and uh, trying to get the best training. That's why I'm here in Vegas, Fight Capital Gym. I mean, I live in Florida. I love Florida vibes. But sometimes, you know, you got you to gotta get away from when you're doing camp, man, so you can just focus on yourself, man. And Vegas is that the place. So where are we heading off to? Uh, we're going to stop by the, the old training facility when I was uh, on the Ultimate Fighter. I was always, like that guy that would fuck you up, you know what I mean? I was at, at, like, a lot of people picked on me when I was young, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I didn't fit in, man. I was a guy that didn't fit in with nobody, man, because I look different than everybody. They don't know what I am. You're like, well, he's not one of us. He's not one of us either. You know, being I'm, I'm mixed, you know, I got biracial. I'm biracial, so I have, my dad's black. I have Native American. I'm Irish, German, a lot, a lot of different things man a lot of different uh ethnicities so it's kind of like i kind of just took what i could get when it came to friends man but those were the real ones you know what i mean the real ones will find you i wonder if they got anything going on in here now these are the old stomping grounds right here you know uh, this was the old uh ufc training center this was it man like the feeling, like, it brings back so many memories, man, being here, like, this was, like, a big part of my life, man, that, like, you see, I'm, like, even getting emotional just trying to even think of what I'm saying, gonna say, you know what I mean? Because it's, like, it's it's just a feeling that I had, like, this changed my life, man. Like, you know, this was a big part of my journey, and it's something that not everybody, nobody, like, barely anybody get to experience it, you know what I mean? Like, 16 guys get to experience that shit. A lot, a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of pranks, you know? I remember, um, uh, Team Dillashaw stuffed our, our, our locker room full of fuck full of snakes. I was, I just walked into the, to the dressing room one day, and, and I just, like, all these people are just, there's, like, four people that are, and they were crazy looking. I'm just like, who the fuck are these people? And they're just looking at me, staring at me. And next thing you know, I, like, look down at my feet, and I got a big-ass python right in front of me, and I'm like, oh, shit! You know what I mean? Like... So, like, that's the type of shit that went down here, man. You know, it was an amazing experience, man. The Let Me Bang Bro uh, episode from The Ultimate Fighter, yeah, it just really gave me a, a ton of haters. And and that's that's kind of what built this whole fucking Let Me Bang, you know what I mean? Like, if, if it wasn't for the haters, bro, that wouldn't, that, that wouldn't be my name, you know what I mean? Because it was something that was... I don't like to watch. I'm sure a lot of people love to watch it, like, because it's funny. But, you know what I mean? Like, at the end of the day, it was, it was something that I wasn't 
I wasn't happy about. And over the uh, last few years, I've, I've, I've learned to embrace it, man, because, like, everywhere I go, people shout, let me bang. That's like saying, what's up? You know what I mean? Like, that's my name. So it's like every, I just, I just started embracing it, man, because there's no way I can get away from it, man. And I might as well just use it to my advantage now. And I'm loving it. gonna post up let you guys see from the outside this is the ultimate fighter redemption house man this is big big part of the journey man these are the these are the grounds that we walked on man for ultimate fighter redemption you know the house is huge it's very beautiful inside man and like i said it's an inspiration just living in something like this and knowing like it's possible to have something like this in life you know you work hard enough and you'll get something you'll get something that's amazing man a win against mike pierre definitely is going it's going to put me in that, that, that higher tax bracket, you know what I mean? That's where I want to be at. I'm, I'm trying to get paid the most money I can make, and, you know, that's only going to happen fighting the top fighters. And being Mike Perry has, I'm not saying he's a top fighter, he's a shit fighter, but he's got a lot of followers. So, you know, the way the world works these days, man, you got you to gotta have that following. And I don't like this fucking guy, you know what I mean? And you can't just come in bare knuckle and think you're going to make an easy check. In order to get in, you got to get through me. From Orlando, Florida, Latina, Mike Perry. There we go. I'm going to go for the cross. Oh, overhand right there by Perry. Really uncomfortable for Michael Seals under the chin. Nice right uppercut by Perry. Look at Perry go. He's just swinging this. It is Perry who's the stronger of the two to end the fight. Yeah, Perry swung the uppercuts in between as well and connected with it. Look at this fight. They're going to the They're ready to let the fight. <laughs> Michael Seals and Mike Perry. Are you serious? Oh, what a fight. Yeah, yeah they're, they're both good now. They, they can't win no. anymore. When the boss man told me a while ago, I was at one of the Paige Van Zandt press conferences. Yeah. We want to check it out. Well, we It'll be a great out. experience. No, I really appreciate the experience. Thanks, and, uh, like it. Trust me. Yeah, who knows, man, the future goes. Just literally finished. And he was like, Mike, I think you're in the wrong sport. And I was like, uh, I disagree. Keep going. Yes, turn. Move turn. forward. But I was just trying to get him to pay me more to come here. So it worked, I think. And, uh, you know, now I'm here and I'm ready to shine. I'm ready at all times. You know what's crazy? Like, okay, so people see Mike as Mike, right? Wild man, you see him like that. Mike is a cool cat, you know what I mean? He's so, before Mike wasn't humble. You know, Mike was wild. Mike, you couldn't tell Mike nothing. Mike had his baby boy, and I think that changed him. You know, I think he became a, a, a grown, pure grown man. You know, he, his, his maturity went through the roof because now he has responsibility. And that right there alone, you know, Mike is a completely different person. If I ask Mike to be here at a certain time, he's here on time. No questions asked. If he can't make it, he gives me a, a big notice to let me know he's not going to make it. And he's always pushing himself, asking for more. You know, some people continue down a road that keeps failing them. They, they bang their head against the wall and they never change anything. What drove you to, you know, want to live a better life? Man, probably... Uh... You know, banging your head against the wall and realizing that the wall is going to win that, you know. Uh, <laughs> it's my son, my son, man. Um, my family, my son, my girl, my baby, my dog. Life is full of adversity, but it's I live for it. And I have to take care of things. I have to take care of my family. They need me. And I'll do whatever I have to do to provide for them. You know, I have to lead by example and hold my head high every time, knowing that I did my best. 
I will do my best again and again and again every time. Refuse to lose. A lot of people told me, Mike ain't gonna listen to you. Mike, you know, Mike wanna do his own thing, but nah, it's completely different. You just gotta know how to train Mike. You know, you gotta let Mike do Mike. You can't change Mike's style. You can't change anything. You can help him and give him small details of things to do to add on, but you can't completely change his game. You can't. Mike's gonna do Mike. You know, and you gotta, you gotta, you gotta honor that. The exciting thing is anything can happen in this sport and uh, uh, two big names, you know, Mike Perry and Julian Lane. And uh, I think it's meant to be two big guys, strong, crazy motherfuckers that want to go all out. And, and yeah, I appreciate that. Two crazy guys, you know, one of them is going gonna, is gonna to go down. We don't know. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that was my Bellator debut, man. He knocked this guy out in 96 seconds of the first round, and he was the number one contender. And I was happy. You know, I think he and was like 7-0 and o or something like that. Yeah. This, is, this is what got us into... That's what got me on the Ultimate Fighter. Ultimate Fighter. That win right there put me in the Ultimate Fighter. And this is his little brother. He's a little anymore. He's probably yeah. bigger than me, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> well, this is my champ. Heck yeah, man. And besides, you know, besides Pops, I got my, like I said, my mom too, man. Oh, yeah. You know, love my mom. She, she my number one fan, you know what I mean? Oh, like, man. like, that was why, like I said, I was literally walking out to a fight one time, and it was a pro fight. And I'm, I'm walking out to the, to the cage to fight, and my mom's fucking... Smack this dude across the face and she's talking shit to him and I'm like, Mom, what the fuck? I'm walking out to my fight. Like I'm literally like yeah. grabbing her and holding her as I'm walking to the cage to fight, man. Like when I was that's like that's where I get get the I think that's where I get the loose cannon from, you know what I mean? Tell me about Bare Knuckle. Other guys shy away from it. I feel like you're definitely one of the guys who, who, who's a real fighter. What's Just you being here says that all the way, you know what I mean? What's up, Julian Lane coming over and now a full brawl in the crowd. Julian Lane and Mike Perry. You know, he tries to he I get what he's doing. Cause he did it already with that little BS that uh, stunt that he pulled. You know, um, he was behind the guardrail, and the first thing he did when I got up on my seat was he backed up. He backed up and was like, oh, oh, wow, he's like actually coming after me. So he's gonna do that in the fight. He ain't gonna come forward, and his boxing is trash. He's trash. Trash person, trash fighter, trash boxer, no swag, no technique, stiff as a board, and I'm gonna bust his face apart. He said I backed up, okay, cause I, it caught me off guard. I mean, I walked up, I didn't know what the fuck I was gonna do, honestly. I was just, went, I, I'm just walking, oh, that's Perry, okay, well, let's go. Let's, 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 let's approach this guy, cause he's done seen me, he done seen me all night walking up and down these bleachers and all up and down this floor. And he ain't said a word to me. So, you know, I was like, well, there he is. Here's my chance to break the ice. Let's go see what he's about. I stepped back so I can, you know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm aware, man. Like, I'm not just going to let you walk up and, and just sucker punch me. You know what I mean? Like, sucker punch and, like, platinum sucker punch Perry or whatever the fuck. All right, we'll see who's backing up in the fight, though. You know what I mean? I'm sure he's taking his drugs, his steroids, or whatever he's doing, how he went from 155 to 175, whatever he's got to do. Ah, let's go, play the pussy. What the fuck you up, you little pussy? Go play the son of a bitch. Ah, ah, ah. Yes, let's go. So let's go test it out. Let's go see what the hell I'm made of. I can't wait. For a fair opportunity. Yeah. No guardrails in between us. Just open space and then I'm gonna pop his ass and the ref's gonna step right in. Look at L now. I was born for this and um, you know Julian Lane was born to get knocked out. Simple as that. Julian gave me a little taste of what there, what, what there is to come 
that little motivation. I think I gave him stitches in his mouth, man. Like, that was the motivation I needed to, because I'm fighting this bum in my eyes. So it's like, was I ever really going to train hard? Every day I get to think about, oh, okay. He got my lip once. Okay. I better, I better make sure that when I show up, I'm, uh, I'm way too prepared for him to even come close to. He's not even half of what Tiago Alves is. They've always brung me in to lose. You know what I mean? And, and I'm the upset king, bro. We're gonna call it like fucking Ali and Liston. You understand? First man of the first round, Mike Perry's going down. I'm one of the guys in the world who can be very angry and not fight like I'm angry. I'm gonna touch him up. I'm gonna touch him whenever I want. Uh, fake him out. We'll see if he ever comes forward at all. I'm gonna knock him out at weigh-ins if he tries to get close to me, if he tries to do his little dumb bum shit where he puts his forehead down and tries to walk into you. He got no respect for the sport, no humility as a person, and I'm gonna slap him up every chance I get. Every time I see him, I'm going after him. You won't see words from me like there is right now. The cameras are here, nobody else is here. It's just me and the camera, I'm here to talk. But when it comes time and I see him, every time I see him, I'm going at his throat. He gonna let me bang. Bro, let's go! Welcome to the world of Bare Knuckle TV. Watch every live Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship pay-per-view event for only $4.99 per month. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including unlimited access to the full library of BKFC pay-per-views, behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare-knuckle fights from around the globe. You can access it anywhere you want, anytime you want, instantly on most streaming devices. It's available right now on Bare Knuckle TV. Over 1,000 hours of on-demand content, uncut and uncensored. All here, anytime you want, anywhere you want, for only $4.99 a month. Subscribe now exclusively at BKFC.com.